record. All right, it started. It started again. Sorry to to interrupt yeah. you here. So, Not can you all. proceed? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've been coming becoming uh, more involved with the the research at one of our local universities, and we formed a a, a startup company, which is uh, uh, an R and D company based on that research. Yeah. And what we're doing is is we're developing solutions to problems that extend around the world. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a test that will diagnose lung cancer before symptoms appear, mm. which will enable uh, uh, screening to, to happen with smokers. Okay. We've developed tests um, for bovine TB, okay. which is a worldwide problem. So we've got the results of something like eight to 10 years of research behind us in several projects, and we're now ready to look at commercialization. Okay. Very exciting, very challenging, highly disruptive, and producing benefits um, of untold value, not just to the yeah. individuals, but to health services as well. I mean, this is so interesting because, well, first, um, not sure if you know about my background, but um, I started a, a supplement company, uh, a brain supplement, so like a cognitive supplement. And it's been kind of my obsession, you know, like uh, brain performance and, and health as a general. Um, yeah. And getting one oneself tested for pretty much anything is kind of a pain. You need to show up to a lab, you know, uh, and just just showing up is, is not like a, a 2021 experience you know everything should come at your door um and one of my latest business idea and that that's what where i want to get your advice on well first I, obviously i have the brain chip on on my uh my roadmap of what i want, I want to build a bit like Neuralink, but also from a, a blood analysis standpoint and here we're talking about disease but in my case it would be more just to to prevent you know and which is the the best stage of things you rather prevent something that heal it um and this this chip and uh, my question to you is 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 can ultimately can can this device like be used like for instead of injecting it in the blood can we just like uh do a saliva or urine test but this this actual thing would tell you for example um why you're tired um, why, why do you feel stomach pain, for example? Um, so it, it would kind of track, you know, the, the food that you ate, but it, hence why, you know, like a, a test, a, the, the form of, of test, like the one that you offered might be a bit challenging, but could, could, what would be your, your feedback on that? First, could we go with, um, let's say a, a, a test, a, a, a flow test, like you call it, um, or should we absolutely go, uh, could, could we go with lateral flow testing with such a device that would um, kind of tell you about like deficiencies or should we absolutely go with like a, a blood chip, uh, aka <laughs> something that you would inject in one's body and constantly track your, your nutrients and, and pains most probably, how would you go with that? It, it's what what you've just said there, Charles, is extremely interesting and exciting. And having seen the the way that technology in health and in the in 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 terms of the human condition, the way that that technology has accelerated uh, since I was a boy, I, I've no doubt that what we will see in ten or fifteen years. Um, will be quite extraordinary. Uh, I think that lateral flow will have a place within the human body. I think the, what I, what I imagine you see, what you, your vision, I can well see an implant in the brain, which will be analyzing uh, the chemicals and the, bio, the biologicals. Um, I, I can see that happening. Isn't the, the challenge is like the approval, right? Because injecting, I mean, lateral flow is interesting because you don't need much approval for, from the FDA. I'm saying much because 
even the Apple Watch, I think, got um, it, like FDA approvals. But when you inject something in the body, I think that's a step further, right? And the, just getting the approval to market must be pretty long, like two to three years and a couple of millions, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But take that forward and have a look at um, things that uh, the guy from Tesla is looking at. Yeah. He sees that pathway mm -hmm. uh, or a similar pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think what the, the, the kind of concept you've got in mind, it's not a tomorrow solution. It's maybe not even a next week solution, but mm -hmm. certainly 10 or 15 years away, I, I can see these things happening. I always draw the analogy between uh, bones in Star Wars, Star Trek, <laughs> with his tricorder. Now, the interesting thing is that while he, uh, while that tricorder is supposed to be passing over the body, reading the body, what I think is going to happen is that the body will have chips in it and sensors in it that are actually transmitting to that, let's call it the tricorder for the minute. And I think, again, in 10 or 15 years, you will have a device at home, you'll turn across your body, and it will give you readings on all sorts of conditions. As you say, tiredness, depression. And so you can even measure depression with lateral flow tests these days. Mm -hmm. Certainly how, how would one do that? Like how would a urine test? I mean, if, if we take because my, my next question like would be. Why, why doesn't Apple get on that? Obviously, but probably because it's a billion dollar problem, but, and, and how a startup could, could do that. But before I, before I ask that, like how, how the, would uh, lateral flow testing, well, first, the thing that I don't like about lateral flow is the UX is not um, perfect. Um, the solution to that, I think, would be just to put it in probably your bathroom so that yeah. you can pee on it like all the time, for example, without like having to hold something in your hand or, or something like that. You might want to you might want to touch a, a bit more on 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 that point here. But how how also could it diagnose depression, for example, in urine? Would there be some kind of molecule that would or the lack of, of some molecule that, that would indicate like um, a, a depressive um, mood disorder, for example? Yeah, you, you've, you've hit, hit on the very center of research and the clinicians decide that they want to uh, work on a particular condition. Let's say it's depression, let's say it's step stresses, um, whatever that condition might be, if they decide they want to, to work on that, mm -hmm. the first thing they do is they gather 50, 100, 150 individuals with that condition. Mm -hmm. Then they run very, very detailed and comprehensive um, analysis okay. on urine. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, with the, the labs up at Aberyst with University, mm -hmm. my colleagues can identify up to 20,000 individual components in a sample okay. of urine okay. and the, the the deep science is to be able to work through the data on those 20,000 substances mm -hmm. and identify the substances that are common within people with depression okay now that's a very very simplistic uh, description <laughs> but you know <laughs> Yeah, because obviously things could get pretty complicated. Um, yeah. I have a question for you. What is what does urine have that blood doesn't, and what does saliva has that blood doesn't? Uh, what what components do they have, and what components uh, do they not have? Is blood better than everything else from an analysis standpoint? Uh... I'm not clever enough to be able to answer that intelligently. <laughs> but what I will say is that if you're in a testing environment, if you take a blood test, yeah. you need somebody who's qualified to take that blood test. Mm. 
you then need to send that blood sample to a laboratory. Mm -hmm. So you may not get the results back on that blood test for three days, four days. Okay. And it's quite expensive. Yeah. To send but it. with a lateral flow urine test, mm -hmm. you can do it yourself. Yeah. And these days, uh, you read the results of that urine test mm -hmm. with your smartphone. Yep. So you can take a urine test. You'll know what the results are within 10 minutes. So, for instance, you can do studies on cancer with both urine and blood mm -hmm. uh, and e even saliva. There are obviously differences, but as I say, I'm, I'm not smart enough to be able to tell you what they are. Mm. But I know that um, in many cases, urine sampling is much quicker and it doesn't have the complexities of a blood test. Okay. And hence is why, for example, Bon Health and, and the device, it's, it's mostly urine, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Saliva also, obviously, I mean, I'm opening my mouth right now to talk, letting in all kinds of bacteria, you know, so I mean, there's there's this urine, I mean, we kind of let out uh, the bad stuff, but also a bit of good stuff inside it. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies, like uh, interesting companies are, are now doing, you know, gut microbiome. I think that's kind of a hot topic. Um, yeah. Right now, with with uh, with feces, which obviously is is nothing sexy, yeah. <laughs> like, um, I, but I, I mean, it's there's no better solution because it's you know the, the gastro in, intestinal tract. Um, have right. you thought about that side of the business and what what is the the hottest trends right now? Like, what what people are after? Is it about prevention or is it like diagnosing uh, cancer, for example? What are the hot niches right now in health tech? Certainly cancer. Okay. Uh, for instance, as I say, we, we, we have developed uh, a cancer screening test that will identify lung cancer before symptoms appear. You know, mm -hmm. that, that is world-shaking. Yeah. Uh, but across the world, various cancers are being studied, huge amounts of money huge amounts of very, very clever research are going into it. Yeah. Lung disease generally, uh, for instance, COPD is responsible for a third of the deaths in the world. Wow. And uh, of course, coronary issues, heart disease. So they're kind of, they're the kind of three areas where major deaths, major expenses, major social disruption are coming from. But beyond that, you've got uh, all of the other issues such as um, pandemic, uh, 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 viruses appearing in different parts of the world. I mean, to say, even in your southern states, you've got um, plague appearing, we've got plague appearing in certain parts of Eastern Europe. Mm. Uh, and they need to be controlled. And it's only by proper testing that you can identify and control these things. Mm. So the, the three hot spots, coronary, lung disease, cancer, uh, but there are many other viruses and bacteria trying to kill us, Charles. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, every day, uh, you know, uh, like uh, there's a war going on inside you and I right now, uh, right. And, and we're probably winning it. <laughs> um, and certainly what you were saying about the microbiome, mm -hmm. I think this is frontier science. Uh, it will very soon become, let's hopefully, mainstream and we will start to understand what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, inside us. Have you, have you looked into the, you know, keto vs. cancer? I know Don D'Agostino, uh, prominent researcher at, at Florida, Florida University, um, has kind of outlined the benefits of, of having a, a diet high in fat and low in sugar. Um, and then there's certainly a bunch of startups uh, hatching up from that. I'm not sure if you've heard about uh, Levels. Levels. Um, the website le is levelshealth.com. Have you heard of them? I don't know of that organization, no, but um, I have read a great deal on uh, uh, what you were talking about. 
Yeah, you know, CGMs basically. Yeah, yeah. What do you I think of, of CGMs? Uh, do you, I mean, my, my opinion is that like most of the industry right now that the big corporations, they're quite, um, they, they're still in the market of finding out diseases and they're not really in the, opt, the prevention and optimization market, uh, which level health is, you know, it's, it's all about tracking, for example, what's my blood glucose right now when I eat a salmon, for example, VS yeah. when I eat a cup of, of ketchup, you know, with chips, uh, yeah. with uh, slash uh, fries, and telling me that, yeah, obviously I should stop doing that because my, my blood glucose spikes, you know, uh, obviously yeah. they'll get into other things, but what are your, your thoughts on that? Uh, again, I, I see this as uh, a little bit of frontier science, although to a large extent that there, there are starting to be some holes knocked in that. Yeah. I think that we're very close to on-skin sensors mm. that will measure that kind of blood sugar uh, 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 and probably several other important issues. Yeah. And they won't be that intrusive. You'll wear it very much like a watch. Mm. It'll penetrate the first layers of skin into the you know, into the, the first layers. I, I think what you're saying about prevention, uh, again, that's absolutely right. Uh, one of the drums that I beat over here in, in Wales, in England, is that people are only noticed when they become ill. Okay. And my view is that everybody is part of the user group of the health services. Mm -hmm. kids at school uh healthy kids at school they should be brought in to learn more about their health as you say diet how you know uh, uh, keeping themselves fit yep. and they should be plugged in to mm -hmm. the health services mm -hmm. as early as possible yep yeah and, education um, i mean it's pretty much everything uh, Absolutely. So we, we have to start taking a much longer view. Uh, it has been a practice in, uh, in business, in capitalism, that you look for returns tomorrow. Yep. And it's the same in politics, because most of our politicians are short term, and they look for returns tomorrow. But if we really want to crack human health, we have to take a much longer view and start, you know, at, at the very early stage with, with kids. Yeah, I agree um, with that. Do, do you have a plan for that to kind of educate or, or younger generations? What, what's your goal in, in your life at, at this stage of your life? What, what impact do you want to make out there? I'd, I would love to impact kids and get them looking at their health as much as they look at their sports scores okay. and as much as they look at their their, their video games yeah <laughs> i see a situation where it can be done i think it can be done in such a way that it will engage kids it will educate kids it will challenge kids yeah. and the program that i have in mind it's called it's me. Right. Yeah. Is that a Leighton? Yeah. And the the It's Me program will live on their on their phone. Mm -hmm. It will talk to them in their language. It will talk to them in the same age. It will give them the opportunity to talk to somebody that is probably a computer-driven avatar. Mm -hmm in such a way that they won't talk to their parents, their teachers, or the police. Okay. And I see that as the way of engaging kids in, in their health. Yeah, kind of merging, obviously, like every, every like next platforms, every top of the game UX in the future will be just like a video game, will be like highly, uh, there will be a lot of gamification in there for sure um so would would that be an app you know like i, I see all these kids with, with ipads you know uh what what form would would that take precisely 
I, I think it has to be an app because <laughs> that's part of kids' life. Yeah. But one of the other things this this app would do, mm -hmm. it, it won't be looking for names, mm -hmm. but it will be looking for things like age, race, gender. It will identify things like bullying in schools. Okay. Okay. It will identify depression. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately today, and it's such a great tragedy, there are more and more kids committing suicide because they can't handle life at the moment. It will identify those situations and it will lead to opportunities for those kids to engage in solutions. It will put them on the pathway to help. That's uh, going to be interesting uh, as like, obviously software is not intrusive <laughs> as a, yeah. a device would be. Uh, and, and I mean, AI can, can kind of do wonders. It's just, you know, like the, the challenge in gathering that, that data and having them actually using the app, you know, this is why, yeah. for example, Apple and all those big companies, they have a head start because they already have kids using their apps, for example. Um, yeah they probably can gather, um, not sure if that would be legal, but data from, from these apps. So no, that's, that, that's quite really interesting. Anything else to, to add on this, uh, this amazing project? Um, yeah, I, I've spoken to a, a lot of people down here in, in Wales. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, sports uh, uh, rugby teams involved. Yep. We've got software games involved. We've got the educational involved. We've got certain members of uh, the local government involved. Uh, we're looking for some money to make it happen. Maybe that yeah. I'll, maybe I'll be able to do that in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but the app is it, it's not just there to look for problems. It's also there to help the creative young minds. Yeah. But it'll be able to ask the app. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to go hiking this weekend. What do I need to take on that hiking? Yep. How do I become a better person studying biology? Mm. You know, a whole host of things. I'm worried about my exams. What should I be doing? One-to-one mm. -one conversations, and it would be as real as the conversation with you. That That's a really good and... Um interesting project right here uh, it's definitely under my umbrella of things as i believe in in health a lot and obviously in education and and third the, the children's you know because i mean we all have this kind of chip on the shoulder you know like most of us entrepreneur of like uh yeah i, I wish I, I would have been for example what one of my big chips you know is i wish i, I would have known entrepreneurship from a younger age you know instead I mean, and it's not bad, but I, I got into all kinds of things, um, partying, I mean, drugs and stuff. So, I, I mean, one has to go through those uh, routes and, and hardship, but entrepreneurship provides all of that. I mean, <laughs> serotonin, adrenaline, cortisol, it, it's, it's like, it, it's all in one, you know? So I truly want to to get some news about that project of yours and, and probably contribute to that in some way too. So hope we, we can we can keep touch as this podcast is, is already coming to an end, Jan. I'd, I'd, I'd love to, Charles. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd, uh, I will send you a couple of pages on that project. Please do. I'm an avid reader, so I'll look yeah. that up. Um, congrats on everything you've accomplished in your life so far. It's quite impressive. And yeah, we'll, we'll stay in touch. I have your LinkedIn, send me that. and. Uh, I'll, I'll try to jump in, in in however shape or form I can. Charles, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. I hope we can do it again. All right. Have a great day. Okay. And Bye -bye. you.